All right, good day, folks. It's time for another kind of vloggy style video. And it's gonna be like the last one in some form or fashion where I'm gonna be going through some things and trying to prepare them for recycling. Thanks, random horn honking and random VTech crap in the background because people don't know how to drive around here. I digress. So today I've got this machine here, which is a pretty much turd. I've already scrapped the, let me fix the camera. I've already scrapped the processor out of it ram and whatever else that's worthwhile the last thing i'm going to do here is grab this exhaust fan as i'm going to need that for another machine right over here now i put this together as kind of a discord thing with some random parts now this thing originated because i bought an old was an athlon 200 ge for my old place of work and so i needed to put it together into something because i wanted to have fun with it with the chip which this isn't exactly a high quality build here just talking about putting something together on a budget. So that's what I did. Athlon 200 GE inside of a MSI. I think this is a B450 like gaming max kind of a motherboard. It's micro ATX, of course. I don't remember exactly the name. It doesn't matter too much. I got uh, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory in there. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is a 200 GE. Isn't the memory limited to 2666? In theory, yes, but I overclocked this processor, so I think it's holding a 3.6 gigahertz overclock right now, which is 400 megahertz above the base clock, and I'm running it with a flipping Wraith Prism LED cooler that you'd get on a 2700X. So yeah, it's a bit overkill, but you know, whatever, right? But instead of, well, that, I was actually thinking about using the processor from that particular pre-built, which is right here. It's covered in thermal paste, but it's a Ryzen 3 3200G, so I could stick that in there. And then I'm going to stick that exhaust fan in the back here because this case is one of those like office PC kind of cases where it uses a 92 millimeter exhaust fan. So that'll be perfect because that's exactly what this HP has in it. So I'm positive that it is a 92 mil. I'm not actually 100% sure. Not like it matters in the grand scheme of things, but I'll make it work. So I'm going to rip this out and then... There'll be some other things I'm going to attest to before I make a run to the transfer station for dumping some recycling and potentially finding some other recycled memes that I could take home. Depends on what I find because they recently packaged everything up and that was, a, well, recently it was a few weeks ago. So <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see what's new. All right, and there we go. It's now in. It's just, you know, missing a screw because, of course, in HP pre-built fashion, they don't give you all the screws. They give you standoffs inside of the case. Because, of course, the case has to be special. But also, the cable is quite short. So, you know, I made it work. And it actually should do just fine. The little 92-millimeter fan will work perfect in this case. And, yes, for those wondering about the graphics card, this is not staying in here. I just put it in here as a joke. This is a Radeon RX 5700 XT. But in the case of this system, at least with the current CPU it has, it only runs in PCI Express Gen 3 by 4 mode because there's a PCI Express lane limitation because I have a NVMe SSD sitting in there as the boot drive. So that's whatever. But I'll probably end up swapping, like I said, the processor out for the 3200G. But I might do a fun comparison between the 200GE and the 3200G. But we'll see because I might just end up using that 3200G and another computer because I kind of like the Athlon and Vega case badges on this one. It actually looks really cool. But one inherent limitation of this motherboard, and that might be why I was going to swap out the processor. This one, I've not been able to figure out how you like do a iGPU overclock. So I haven't been able to get it past, I think it's like a thousand megahertz on this chip. So I don't know, maybe somebody can sound off about a B450M Bazooka Max Wi-Fi motherboard and tell me if I can actually overclock the iGPU on it, but I might need a different motherboard, which is totally fine if that's the case. I can always swap it out, but it has to be micro ATX. So, you know, obviously keep that in mind. Anyways, I'm gonna grab my screwdriver because there's one more thing that I was going to go do. And I'm gonna go shut the door so I don't run this truck's battery down because it has door lights, <clears throat> excuse me, as I just lose my voice because, well, not enough coffee. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip down this Optiplex in here. Now, I've had this one for like ever, nearly since I left college, and I bought this for my friend Chris, and it's pretty much sat around. This is an Optiplex 5060 mini tower, and it's got a i5-8600 CPU in it, and I've always wanted to use that chip because it's a pretty good processor, and maybe what I was thinking about doing with it was making a flip system out of it 
but it, as far as this machine is concerned, it's a piece of junk because it's one of these mini tower Dells that has a 12 volt output power supply, which is normally fine, but it doesn't have any graphics card power connectors. So inherently you're limited to a few different modern choices like a GTX 1650, the RX 6400, maybe certain versions of the Intel Arc A380, but the, these don't support resizable bars, so that's not a really good idea. <laughs> Or you could do the RTX T1000 or A2000. There might be uh, certain versions of certain other RTX Quadro cards or whatever. But point being, you're very limited because you only have 75 watts to work with. And that's unfortunate. So, yeah. I'm just going to take the processor out and take whatever else is good. And I'm just going to pitch the rest of the chassis because it's out of warranty anyway. So it doesn't really hurt my feelings much. So... Maybe the processor can go into something else that'll be better suited for it someday. It's six cores and six threads, so it's not the most amazing thing out there, but it should make somebody at least a good computer if I decide to go down that route, which I probably might. It depends on how much motherboards and whatnot will cost. I've got some spare RAM lying around, so I mean, maybe I'll make something happen. And for those who didn't see my YouTube community page, I was actually putting together some shelving, so that's what I've been up to. And as you can see, uh, it's a little uneven because the shed floor is, well, well, not really a floor at all. There's no proper foundation under the shed, but trust me, it's stable. It's fine. But I needed to get some of my stuff out of the garage, and that's how I was able to do it was just by putting some shelving in. So that's what I did. I got my IMAX out, and I got some of the other HP mini towers out of the way and was able to fit a Dimension 5100 in there. Or sorry, 5150. So not too bad. Got my little desktop PCs in here. This thing is actually really cool, but I'll show that in a video another day because that's actually a really interesting computer. And I brought out one of the old Socket 7 machines from when I got those uh, beige machines from a long time ago, which for your informational sakes, I still have them. I still have that uh, Socket 478 Celeron machine down there. Let me see if I can find the other ones in the midst of this whole entire inventory of computers which people are probably gawking at and whatnot the two uh i think they're pentium threes one was like a slot one i could be wrong i think the other one was a socket 370 and then there's the inspire the, not the inspire the studio 540 sitting right there and what other machines were there from the hall gosh i can't remember it's been so long and there was probably some out in the other trailer i think the other socket 7 at systems out there but i do have an at keyboard so at least now i can actually try to work with those things and see what's going on with them well technically i also have a ps2 to at keyboard adapter so whatever <laughs> it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things but i might pull those things out we'll see what happens um, there's been a lot of Behind the th uh, behind the scenes, I can't even speak today. Goodness gracious, any more coffee? <laughs> behind the scenes stuff is what I meant to say, and so there's been some fighting and there's been some other things going on. But point being, um, what's going to end up happening after I get all the stuff out of the garage here that I've been working on cleaning out slowly, which is why there hasn't been any videos. So eventually, this stuff is just going to get like kind of consolidated down, and I'm going to get this like back corner over here. So we'll see how that goes out. Not entirely sure, but we'll figure it out. Um, that dresser is going to go, and then uh, that thing back there is going to move, and then we'll see what kind of space it leaves me. But I'm just cleaning today, and I also wanted to get that fan installed into that thing, so that way we have an exhaust fan because it didn't have one before. Not that it would really make too much of a difference with the 200 GE, but you never know. But again, that video card's not staying in there. But uh, another thing I'm going to do is this board's going to come out, and I'm going to see if it's still any good. So this is a x58 motherboard this is an asus republic of gamers i think it's a rampage 3 gene so this is a proper really nice micro atx uh, x58 socket 1366 motherboard with proper triple channel memory support and it's got a core i7 970 cpu in it that is a six core cpu i believe yeah, so it's pretty beefy it's got a intel cooler on it which is actually quite dense four heat pipes and a fan that you can switch into performance mode to make it go faster. So this thing is definitely no joke. And neither is this motherboard, if it still works. Unfortunately, what ended up happening to it one day when my friend Chris and I had this, and this used to be his system, I think it's probably still gonna be his system at some point when we'll figure out how to rebuild it or however we're gonna go about doing it. But unfortunately, the power supply that was in this thing, it wasn't this one, it was a different one, I think. Um, it let out the magic smoke and things stopped posting. And so, we don't know if it inflicted any kind of damage to the motherboard or 
whatever the case might have been, we just shelved it afterwards because what we tried to do is swap out the power supply. I think that's what we did. I think that's the replacement one. And it just ended up not posting. It would turn on for a split second and then it would shut off. So I think the inevitable has happened to it. I don't want to believe that's the case because these boards are hugely expensive, but I really don't know. I haven't actually used it in a long time, neither has he, so we don't know what truly is wrong with this thing. So what I was thinking about doing was I was going to take the board out as well as the RAM and the CPU, and of course that stuff's staying on the board, and then I'm just going to salvage the DVD drive and then junk the rest because the case is like a 1990s case, you know, specifically 1997. And honestly, I think if this machine gets put back together at some point, it deserves a better case. So <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to do. It was a sleeper machine from a bygone era, that's for sure. And so the case is probably still good, but I just don't have anything that's properly vintage and I don't have the space to store it. So, you know, whatever. I know somebody's probably going to be like, but you should get going to the case. And yes, I understand that. But the thing is, this thing is like missing blinking plates. It's missing the hard drive bracket it's missing the slot blanks. Well, it's not really that big of a deal. And as far as the cooling fan goes, it uses like this really dinky small, I think it's like a 60 millimeter of some kind. Like, I don't know how small that fan connector, small connector, goodness gracious. I, again, I can't speak, but this grate here is not great. All right, whatever. So the case is just gonna go as well. I have no reason to hang on to it, neither does my friend. So we're just gonna pitch it after I strip it out. So that's gonna be the idea. All right, they got the Dell in there, and this is the stuff I was able to strip out of it. So processor, stick of RAM, and a hard drive. Stuff that I could repurpose in the future, maybe. We'll see how I feel about it anyway. So I can put the side panel back on this thing, because for the time being, anyway, I'm good with it. So that can go in place of something. And so, yeah, that's going to be next. I got to shut the door here. And, yeah, that's pretty much how my morning is going. Fun stuff, right? Fun stuff. Not sponsored. So there it be. There is the Asus ROG Rampage 3 Gene motherboard with the RAM and well, CPU cooler and all that stuff. Got the optical drive there, which actually surprisingly enough is, I believe, yeah, that's a light scribe unit. So that's kind of interesting. Man, that is an annoying trimmer. Anyways, enough about that. So I got the case in the truck and... At least as far as right now is concerned, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can take. I'm trying to go through my stuff. I'm going to have to find a home for that motherboard as well as a Z490 board I got in the house. You'll soon hear about that later in the video. But in any case, I got to definitely blow this floor or sweep it or whatever I'm going to do with it. And then I got to find places to put all the crap that's on top of the table. I'll probably find a place for that all in one in the monitor. Well, just temporarily anyway. But in any case, I got some more optical drives over there that are going to need to be dealt with. So lots of stuff to do and not enough time to do it because I'm usually working. Or if I'm not working, I'm benchmarking. Or if I'm not benchmarking, I'm sleeping. First world problems. I'm not complaining at all, but it's just whatever. And I also got to clean up that dresser because, well, that's going to be leaving soon. So yeah, fun stuff ahead. But I think for the time being, I think that's all I'm going to be recycling today. So I'm going to go grab the truck keys and then we'll head out and we'll go take those things. And we'll see what happens. And yeah, we were putting seat covers in this. So supposedly this side didn't fit, but yet this side does. I don't know how that was supposed to work. We don't have the smartest people around here putting stuff together. So I'll have to figure that out later. Anyways, it's nearly noon, not quite, but this is still 65 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So it's kind of a cold-ish start. Shouldn't be no problem, though. Oh, yeah. Well, 5.8 starts every time. Oh, there's that noisy trimmer over there. What is this? Oh, they're doing tours of that house? Is that what they're doing? Yep. Looks like it. Cool, I guess. Let's see, do we have a line? No line! Oh, let's go. All right, so it looks like it's going to be a two-trip kind of day. I found this Toshiba Pentium 4 laptop, of all things, so don't know if it's any good, but there they had a compact desk pro with a Pentium 3 and, a like, a PC-286 kind of thing. I'm definitely going to check that out. So I got to justify taking some more things to recycle, and I think I know exactly what I'm going to go ahead and take, so this is going to be a cakewalk. But once some traffic clears, then we'll 
go ahead and we'll do a quick rip in the 5.8 because the exhaust in this truck just sounds so good. Oh. It's not the loudest thing, but it sounds actually really satisfying. So here's a look at the inside of this thing. I actually don't even know if I'll hang on to this thing ultimately. It looks like it's got a little bit of interesting crap going on with the keyboard. And the machine has some cracked hinges on the back. But it does have an interesting like CD player kind of display on the front of it. So that's why I was intrigued by it. And then a couple of PC card slots. It's a little dirty. But uh, it does have a couple USB ports that are intact. It's got Ethernet. Uh... It's got some pretty beefy speakers, but yeah, you can kind of see their little crack. Not all that bad, though. It Luckily, they did actually... Is that the hard drive bay, I think? Or is that the... No, that wouldn't be the battery, would it? No, the battery's underneath on these things, so maybe they did take the hard drive out. Well, maybe we'll go back. Hmm. Well, whatever. If that's the case, that's totally fine, too. So, <laughs> but in any case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the trunk of my car and I think what I'm going to do besides cleaning out the plastic sacks I'm going to load stuff into the back of here and there's a couple of culprits that I know for a fact I don't need so I can get rid of them because they're kind of useless uh, first of which is going to be this thing here I believe this HP Pavilion 513N can go as it's a crappy seller on socket 478 I believe don't really need it, so it can go. Uh, might consider that HP Pavilion there with the external power supply because it's an A8 6410, I believe. So don't really need that either. And I was thinking about some other things that I was thinking about taking. Um, perhaps maybe that thing down there, uh, that Lenovo Idea Center, that could probably go. Of course, I believe all these things have hard drives in them, so I got to strip out hard drives before I take them, just because I don't want other people ending up with my hard drive data. So, you know, it goes. But I'm thinking about trying to, like, find stuff to justify taking because I want that 286, damn it. <laughs> that that Desk Pro with a Pentium 3, I don't really need that either. But, I mean, holy hell, those things would be kind of cool. So, and I think there's also a Precision Workstation there, an old Pentium 4, and that might, uh, don't quote me on this, but... Might be one that takes RD RAM. I'm not sure about that though, so don't quote me on that. But it might be one that takes RD RAM. So wouldn't that just be a fascinating thing? So yeah, that digital PC is not going, obviously. But there's a couple things in here. Uh, I could probably take this A524X. This machine I didn't show on the channel. There's no AGP graphics, and it's kind of a worthless model. It's only got a CD raw CDRW DVD ROM drive, and uh, I'll obviously save some things out of it, but. Otherwise, I mean, I have the A250N, the old tried and true socket 478 machine, which that one is as well. And then I have that machine over there, the A747C. That one's a socket 775 system, which actually justifies it being here because it's got PCI Express as well. And yes, I know it's got bulging capacitors, but the damn thing still works just fine. So I figure what the heck, might as well hang on to it. And I want to say, now don't quote me on this, I want to say I might have something else that I could take that I don't really need. I'll have to go through this trailer here to find that out because uh, I definitely, there's some things I'm going to just pitch because I don't really need them and I need the space more than anything. So I'm going to get to loading and then I'm going to show you the aftermath when I get stuff into the car and we'll just go from there. All right, three more hard drives claimed. So got those things in the back. And I'm going to grab this laptop because I figure, eh, it's not really worth my time in the grand scheme of things. So I can go. And so, yeah, I can just sit in the back here, find a home. I'm also taking this big chungus. This is a Intel entry-level server with a Pentium D in it. And it's got bulging capacitors as well, so go figure. Don't really need it. It's kind of big. So that's that. So I'm going to go grab my car keys instead of the truck keys. Let's go get this stuff done. Let's see if I can uh, see if I can salvage that 286. Oh my god, I'm so excited for that. I hope I can. All right, boys, I did it. I have got the 286. I cannot be more thrilled. But I'm waiting here and I'm recording because that drive-through is an absolute disaster over there. So I'm not gonna sit and wait in there right now and burn through all my gas. But let's check out what is in these machines. So um, at least the Dell, because. 
this is the one that I was able to swipe out. And I'm not sure if it's already RAM or what the deal is. I just managed to grab it, but it's upside down. It's a Precision 370 Pentium 4, which I know, I know I don't need another Pentium 4, but come on. You don't see them in a precision form factor these days, and I'm surprised that this was around here. So I don't know where it came from. I guess we'll have to figure that out later. Right back here is a compact Desk Pro uh, Pentium 3 system, like I said earlier. And I'm trying to look inside. I don't see a video card, but it does have a mixture of PCI and ISA slots. And I believe that is a Socket 370 Pentium 3. I'm not sure on that. I think, I know I'm not doing the very best camera job here, but whatever, right? So maybe that'll be something for another day. I have to get one of those compact kind of video cards where it sits up here. It's AGP, if I remember correctly, or maybe in this case, no, it's still AGP in this case, uh, but it doesn't have onboard video and they take those really weird video cards. So I might have to steal one from my Pentium 2 unit. I don't know. I'd have to figure something out, but in any case, I'll figure that out later. I presume it works. And then of course this thing, I have no idea. It had a lot of cards in it. So let me see if I can flip this around here. It is a disaster over here, man. I guess I'm not gonna get my quarter pounder. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the back of this. It's Seattle Micro branded anyway. I don't know what that's about, but it does have a mm, good power connector there. Six slash 10 megahertz, if that's anything to go by. Um, it's got a fair bit of expansion in it. We got a dial up modem of some kind. We have an IO card with a 25 pin serial and a game port it looks like, as well as a parallel port, nine pin serial, some kind of sound card and a VGA or EGA video card, one of the two. Had a knockout plug up there for something. and I don't know what, but holy hell, that thing is caked in dirt. <laughs> I just not noticed that, that's insane. But I'm not gonna be able to get into this one cause I don't have a screwdriver handy, but that's okay. Uh, same thing's probably gonna go for the compact. I think that also requires screws to take out. So let's see about getting this Dell cracked open. I see a video card in there. Unfortunately, well, it's a DMS 59 one, but hey, it's a video card. Why don't you say, we'll check that thing out real quick because the drive through is slowly moving away and I wanna get in there and get my food. On the good side, there is no RD RAM. Bad news is I think this thing is a victim of cat plague or it's about ready to become one. I see one right there that might be a potential suspect. Not sure about that though. If I can get this fan cover off, I'll see the rest of the story. Oh, Dell and your stupid fan ducks. I hate you for that. Whatever. Actually, surprisingly, no, or it was recapped at one point. That's amazing. I think this thing probably dates from like 2002, 2003. That's interesting. It does have PCI Express though, so maybe it's not. That is PCI Express, so maybe this is newer than I thought it was. Huh, I guess the serial ATA should have gave it away, but uh, you know, whatever, right? Yeah, it even says that right there, PCI Express X1 and X16 card slots. There's no, oh, actually there is a power connector. No way. Dude, this thing would be epic if it works. Not too thrilled about those bulging capacitors. There's one there, there's one there, and I didn't see any other where the heat sink was, but those two caps could be a problem later on, and I hope that they're not. I mean, they're not that hard to change if they are the, the problematic kind. 24th of January, 2005 on the power supply. What video card does this thing even have in it? I probably bet some kind of ATI solution because it's got DMS-59 on it, and it's got a couple of modems for some reason but other than needing a hard drive which it does have the little brackets thank god somebody put those in there or maybe those were in there from the factory but it takes a serial ata hard drive so yeah what the heck let's see if this thing fires up i'm actually really intrigued to see if this thing works so you know what i think even though i know i don't need another damn pentium 4 this thing's kind of nifty and i hope that i can make use of it that would be epic Ah, man, I well and truly do not believe I'm going to get into this drive through and also that's a copyright strike, so I can't record very long. Okay, I'm now home, and I figured we'd go ahead and dive into both the 286, perhaps, as well as this Compact Desk Pro, and I think I actually figured out how this Compact will open up, or at least a way that it'll open up. I think this thumb screw here actually contains the motherboard in a tray? Maybe? 
Is that how this works? I don't know how this comes out, actually. Forgive me, I am new to this. No, actually, maybe it doesn't come out on a tray. And I think that actually is a slot one Pentium 3, just kind of looking in there. Let me see if I can get the camera in there. Yeah, that is most definitely a slot one Pentium 3 in there. All right. Well, that's cool. Uh, maybe... Oh, there isn't any screws holding the cover on, I think. I'm going to figure this out. However, this comes off. So, like, slide forward. Is there something on the front panel I'm missing? I got a screwdriver at the ready with bits on the side. So, I mean, whatever it takes, I guess. All right, I figured it out. So, this was one of those where it had the two tabs, uh, one on each side. You depress those. And after you unscrew the thumb screw here, it slides forward. Now that I know that, that's actually really good to know. That sounded really stupid, but whatever. And I believe this just kind of like tilted forward and off, which takes two hands. As long as that doesn't go falling forward, we should be good. But yeah, that front is plastic on a steel side panel, so that's kind of interesting. Well, here we are on the inside. Unfortunately... No video card there, but that is proper AGP, and they took the RAM, although I've got plenty of that. It is definitely a slot one Pentium 3 processor. Of what clock speed, I don't know yet. Let me see. What's it say down there? 550 megahertz, 256 k cache, 100 megahertz front side bus. All right, cool. 550 megahertz Pentium 3 then in this case. I uh, highly doubt there's going to be a hard drive. I don't feel one back there. The IDE cable is disconnected, so it's kind of a telltale sign this was somebody's play toy. And another thing is it's got some kind of an e-machines optical drive shoehorned into the front panel, which is obviously not correct. So that's gonna need to be fixed. So probably not gonna get to it today, but that will need to be addressed. <clears throat> and of course on these machines, for those who don't know, these two green, <clears throat> excuse me, plastic tabs will actually act as a locking mechanism for this expansion riser so that's what has all of your pci and isa slots forgive all the sound going on in the background over there with a the skill saw and such but uh yeah you can take this whole thing and pop it out this pcb has a few connections on it there's an internal speaker there's a cooling fan for the processor and then there's a couple other optional ones for scuzzy access LEDs and a NIC or network interface card wake up thing. So that's like your wake on LAN. This I believe uh, had an optional network card that supported that through the motherboard, but it was a PCI card. So it doesn't have any kind of onboard ethernet, or at least not in the case of this model, it didn't have it. <clears throat> the motherboard was apparently assembled in Mexico. And this does take up to, it looks like a 600 megahertz CPU. So that's kind of cool. I don't have one of those, but that is really neat to see. So yeah, um, it looks pretty good in here. Uh, power supply is a 200 watt maximum, so not too bad for the time period. Also, another thing about this backplane riser thing is that's where all of the... Let me see if I can get this on camera here. So this is where your power connectors go, your IDE connectors, and your floppy connector, as well as your CD-ROM audio. They all connect to this kind of backplane interface, hence why it has this massive connector on it. Kind of an interesting machine. I believe I, I want to say my Desk Pro EN Pentium 2 had a very similar motherboard layout with this sort of uh, rising uh, backplane PCB sort of thing, which is really quite cool. But it had a video card in it, so that might be the way I'll have to test this thing is I'm going to need to borrow its video card because it has that special bracket that has these weird little like low profile things on it. So yeah, I'll have to figure that out how that's going to work. But I will figure that out another day. I have, like I said, I got RAM, so, and also have a hard drive. Sweet. So the Desk Pro, in this case, looks to be a winner. And it's probably going to work. I have no reason to believe it wouldn't work. Now, the main star of the show, let's see if I can dig into this 286. And let's see what's inside. Crap, I forgot. I gotta film the 286. Future Jordan here, and I cannot believe I didn't film this thing. Why didn't I do that? I guess, I mean, at the time I was uh, doing a thing on Discord with another friend on a voice chat, and I was showing off this computer, and I guess I totally spaced filming it. So here we are now, a day later, filming this thing again. So, yeah, I apologize. That's not going to be the same reactions, but that's okay. Spoiler alert, this is not actually a 286. I uh, hate to burst the bubble. I thought it was, but, uh, yeah, it's not. The CD-ROM drive probably gave it away. Same thing with the sound card. So, yeah, this is actually... 
a socket three machine. It is a 486DX at 40 megahertz from AMD. Yes, standard DX, not a DX2. This is something that is now classified as my oldest computer. That's really awesome. And it's Visa local bus if you weren't paying attention. So that's another giveaway that this is definitely not a 286. So I am ecstatic. At the same time, I'm a little sad, but I mean, I get it. It was a rebuild into the same case and it's fine. It's AT, it's what it's designed to be used for. So, hey, it worked out. Another thing that is completely awesome about this is it does not have a barrel battery anywhere. Not even anywhere on the board, like nowhere. What it has instead is one of these plug-in solutions that externally sits in the case. I am so glad that I discovered that because I don't have to worry about a leaking battery with this thing, or at least not in the conventional kind of leaky way. And it would just plug in and I could always substitute that with another kind of solution in the future. So that's awesome. Or I mean, I guess I could just forego it, but I would hate to have to keep adding the drive geometry every time I turn it on. So, I mean, eh, it's whatever, but yeah, Visa local bus, that is just, awesome it does have some cards that will take advantage of that which is even better so for example this vga video card well that is a cirrus logic cl gd 5426 and i believe that is a one megabyte video card i i don't know i could be wrong on that but it's visa local bus so that is awesome and then I believe this is like a multi IO controller card that's also on Visa Local Bus. It has the extra connector pins that go into the slot and that controls your IDE for the hard drives. Yes, there are two of them in this case. And there's a separate controller for the CD ROM drive, but the three and a half inch floppy drive in this case also fends off of that same Visa Local Bus uh, multi IO card. So that is pretty dope. And it has some of the outputs from the back, like the 25 pin pair of uh, parallel serial. There we go. Uh, the joystick port, the nine pin serial, and then the LPT port for the printer more than likely. So pretty nice card must have for a system like this. There's your sound card that more than likely was paired with the CD-ROM drive. This is a Reveal SC400 Revision 3, I believe. And it's based on a crystal, which I can see if I can get zoomed in here. Here you can see it's a Crystal CS4231. Not the best sound chip in the world, but certainly far better than nothing. And it's a fairly respectable chip for DOS gaming, as well as Windows 95 gaming. It's got okay MIDI. And like I said, it's not the best thing in the world, but like I said, it certainly beats having nothing. So I'm gonna leave that in there because that is a perfectly serviceable sound card on 16-bit ISA. And then there's the modem, another Sirius Logic chip with a little piezo speaker, presumably for when it's dialing. So that's pretty nice. And then down there is a Creative Labs CD-ROM controller, which is interesting. They're not using the one that's built into the sound card. I'm wondering if there's some kind of IRQ conflict or a driver problem that probably explains some of the weird things that you'll see in the device manager in the later part of this video where I show this machine turned on. Here you can see it's got four 72 pin SIM sockets, two of which are populated. This has eight megabytes of RAM. And what's crazier even still is inside of the cache sockets, actually might be a little better to show it off over on this side. You can see down there, there's all of the cache. This thing has a whopping 256K of cache. So this thing could probably, if I wanted to upgrade the memory, it could go 64 megabytes or beyond. Don't know what the maximum of those board would be, but eight megabytes was pretty standard, but having 256K of cache is excellent. So this thing actually feels a lot faster than you'd expect a 40 megahertz 486DX to feel. Although, yeah, it could definitely benefit from having a memory upgrade. There's no doubt about that, but maybe we'll consider that in the future. And then, uh, yeah, other aspects. There, like I said, there's two hard drives actually, before I forget about that. So this Mac store on the top is around 520 megabytes and it fits within a non-LBA drive size limit. The drive that's underneath it is a Seagate of some kind. Um, what was it? A Seagate? Um, ST, was it 3630A? That's about a 600 megabyte hard drive. And as far as 
raw, unformatted capacity is concerned. But alas, unfortunately, um, <laughs> this is not a motherboard that supports logical block addressing as far as I'm aware. So unfortunately, it needs a drive overlay program in order to access the full capacity of the disk. Not a big deal. I luckily found that that was on the hard drive still, so I can copy that off and reinstall it. But it is an inherent limitation of this motherboard. I believe it is from about 1994, just based on some of the date codes I saw on the chips. And then, yeah, it's got a case with a turbo LED, and luckily the key lock is unlocked, although that's not really that big of a deal. But the CD-ROM is a four-speed. It's quite grungy, needs a good cleaning. Well, so does the rest of the computer, truthfully. But luckily, this isn't that bad. It looks like it's just grunge. It's not actually surface rust on the case. That could be a little bit of corrosion there, but not a big deal. So I think it'll clean up absolutely wonderfully. And aside from needing to fix the IEC input on the power supply with a brand new connector, because that's definitely not safe, um, <laughs> I think this thing's a winner. So let me skip ahead now and we'll check out this thing turned on. So I decided against my better judgment about the power connector on the back of the power supply, I should not be doing this, but I just did it on a voice chat. So here's how we're gonna do it. I pulled this stupid thing out and I jammed the power connector in there, but it's just uh, sketch. That's the best way I could put it, it's, it's sketch. So there's the bits of broken plastic that were left over from that connector housing. So, at the very least, if nothing else, this is going to need to be serviced and I need to put a new power connector housing in there from another unit or get one off the shelf or something. But I do have my AT keyboard in, I got a serial mouse and I have a VGA monitor because that card is VGA. And I have the power switch back here, Let's flick to the on position, just because I'm not gonna be anywhere back here where I'm gonna touch this thing because I'm just, in that kind of a state of paranoia, like not that I normally would be, but I don't trust that IEC connector. So I have the power switch here from this socket or the strip rather. And yeah, it's gonna flick the garage light on, but that's okay. So in any case, here goes. It's got a Seagate hard drive that spins up and sounds pretty good. I just pressed delete to enter the setup here. So as you can see, so standard AMI BIOS setup, and I believe, yeah, that battery actually seems to be holding a charge. So it's got a rechargeable battery pack in there, and somehow it actually still seemingly works, at least for the time being. As for how long it'll actually last is going to be a mystery. As you can see, we have our 8 megabytes of RAM being accounted for, and it looks like what we have is our hard drives. Now, what's interesting is when I turned this thing on earlier it popped up with a disk overlay program. So it might be one of these systems. I'm not entirely sure about this, mind you, because again, the BIOS is from 1993, but I'm wondering if this is one of those machines where the disk can be detected as above 528 megabytes, but it won't actually read it for some BIOS limitation. So it has a, it has, I think it has an OnTrack installed on the boot disk, which is the Seagate drive, which is the 602 megabyte disk you see there. And so that might explain something that I shouldn't be asking a question about, but whatever. But the other drive that Mac store appears to be 515 megabytes. So that's pretty good. And everything else is pretty much set uh, above one megabyte memory test. I had that turned on just to make sure it was all well and good. And I just used the auto detect hard disk to get the parameters because I wasn't about to go taking the cover back off again if I didn't have to. But uh, in any case, so let's go ahead and boot this up and I'll show you around. This thing has a whopping 256K of cache, which is insane for a 486. Uh, normally these things have like 64K of cache. So the nice thing about that is that I could actually upgrade the RAM in this thing from eight megabytes, probably all the way up to like 64 megs or something. Like this thing is actually quite a, nice board with a nice configuration in it at the moment the only thing that's really holding this thing back is the cpu but i mean hey a 486 dx at 40 megahertz i am far from complaining about that so that is awesome and it seems to run great the hard drive sounds great well, both hard drives sound great really uh, the floppy drive appears to sound like it's working the cd-rom drive shows up and the video card being visa local bus here it is it's in 16-bit color 
And yeah, it's got a multi-user setup on it. So unfortunately that's just the way that it is. But of course in typical Windows 9X fashion, you can just <laughs> you can just bypass it. You don't need to worry about the password. And the sound card works too. You play the glorious Windows 95 startup sound there. And so here we are. There's the desktop. It's not got a lot on it. It's got IE4, which I'm so thankful that they did not install the desktop update. I can't imagine what this thing would have ran like with a desktop update and eight megabytes of RAM on such an ancient hard drive. But uh, you'll see what this thing runs like here in a little bit. It's not the fastest thing out there, but it was definitely serviceable for 95. I guess we just had a different level of expectations back then when it came to our technology. So <laughs> eight megabytes and 95 was probably good enough. And I bet you this was probably originally running like DOS in Windows 3.1 and it got upgraded to 95. And it looks like they were using this thing well into the late 90s because again, IE4, and I think there's a copy of Office like 97 on this thing. So both of those would have been from around 1998 or so. So this thing was definitely used pretty well. But I'll just go under the my computer here and go to the properties. Uh, there's gonna be somebody's name on there. So I'm gonna have to like blank that out. But as you can see there, uh, if my hand didn't take priority of focus, uh, 486 and eight megabytes of Ram and it has an OEM license on it, which is kind of interesting. So this might've been done by somebody else. So here we go. Um, as you can see, their sound card is one of those, uh, has like not a resource conflict, but it's kind of weird. It does work, but it says like all of the stuff is not quite working, which is interesting. I've never seen a code 24 error before personally. So at least the output works. I'm not sure about the inputs. So maybe there's some kind of corrosion going on on the card itself, or maybe it's just a driver problem. But there you can see the Sirius Logic video card shows up. Um, got a dial up adapter. I've got my mouse driver, which is really nice. Although it looks like it has a PS2 mouse driver. Well, I'm using a serial mouse because there's no PS2 port on this thing. So I don't know what that's about but whatever. So yeah, that's that. So the sound card is a Reveal SC400 Revision 3, including the controller card for the CD-ROM drive sitting over there, which is a quad speed CD-ROM drive, which is pretty nice. And it does appear that it works. I haven't actually tried to put a disc in yet, obviously. Our system is configured for optimal performance with eight megabytes of RAM, virtual memory, and file system is 32-bit. Although, I don't know about that, bud, but it's what, Windows, it's what Windows thinks anyways. But yeah, it does have IE4. Uh, there's a couple other things that are still on here. Like I said, it's got Office 97, which is kind of a stretch, but it does work and it works pretty well. It did have a copy of Visual Basic 3, but unfortunately that has long since been deleted, it looks like, from the system. So that's unfortunate, so we can't play around with Visual Basic. And also this The Grinch demo that is on here... Unfortunately, this doesn't work as well. It doesn't like need a CD. It just has a broken DLL file, or in this case, it's not found. So some kind of component of DirectX is not there anymore, unfortunately. But um, yeah. Otherwise, there isn't too much in the way of programs. There is the software for the sound card, so the Reveal SC400 here. I bet you this was because of the upgrade from Windows 95, and maybe they just threw it into the system tools folder. But this has, like, your volume level control. It has a jukebox program and whatnot. But Audio Station is one of the fun ones, if I remember correctly, because you get, like, the, yeah, there we go, <laughs> once it loads here. Yeah, no MIDI input devices installed, unfortunately. But look at that. Isn't that just awesome looking? Um, unfortunately, the taskbar is kind of getting in the way of the title bar of this program. So that's unfortunate. I can't move it out of the way here. But yeah, it's got like your, uh, your, your DAT tape deck, your floppy drive for general MIDI, and your CD player. Like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So I believe you can go under here. This opens up MIDI Orchestrator. And then in this case, you can like open up MIDI files. So for example, I tried canyon.mid, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna load up uh, Passport. <laughs> I love this to redraw everything. But there you go, you got like your graphic equalizer down there. As far as the sound card goes, it's got a Crystal Audio CS4231 chip in it. So not the 
most advanced thing in the world, but certainly the CS4231 you cannot go wrong with. It's a solid chip, and it seems to work really well in the system's case. Love that simulated floppy drive activity light. That's cool. So yeah, the sound card appears to be working, at least as far as the output is concerned, just fine. So that's not an issue here. Um, I'm just not sure, like, what the deal is regarding the input devices. I'm not sure what's up with that. America Online 3. But yeah, there's not really too much in the way of... Oh, actually, maybe there is some stuff on here. I was about to say there's no documents on here, but um, yeah, there is. Uh, there's definitely no getting around that. There definitely is. There's uh, like two user accounts on this computer as well, and unfortunately, they have some data on them. So I'm likely just going to have to reinstall Windows, and I'm going to have to reinstall the on-track disk overlay software, which isn't a big deal, but I'm going to have to do that just to clear out the old data. So yeah, that's kind of like the general gist of this thing. It's just full of a lot of stuff from the late 90s, and it's definitely a fun machine to just sift through and check out what its previous life was. Uh, but it definitely should be formatted. There's no question about that. I think <laughs> I'm kind of like showing some stuff that probably shouldn't be shown. But I'll definitely back up that disk overlay software because I definitely need to make sure that that gets reinstalled when I do inevitably reload Windows. Now, comment down below. Do you think I should do DOS in Windows 3.1 or should I do Windows 95 again? Because I could technically benefit from having another machine with a graphical user interface. And 95, like, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it runs okay. But I was wondering maybe it might just be better suited to 3.1 or maybe Workgroups 3.11 because I also have one of those uh, ISA ethernet cards the uh, 10 base t card but i don't know if it would be suitable for the system given the speed of the cpu uh, it might be better off in my 486 dx2 80 megahertz system but we'll have to figure that out another day i guess either way this thing has been awesome i'm gonna go ahead and shut it down because i'm going to move it out of the way and i will definitely need to in the future i'm definitely going to need to look into that um iec connector on the power supply that definitely needs to be replaced there's no question that has got to be replaced that's a safety hazard. So I'm definitely gonna have to work on that. But there we go, it's off, and now I can just flick the switch. And voila, it's all done. But I am definitely going to unplug that power cable because I do not trust that IEC connector. I have been paranoid about it. I told my friend Matt's Tech in my Discord server that I am paranoid about it because I showed him the 486, or, yeah, in this case it was supposed to be 286, but it ended up being a 486. But yeah, I, I do not trust that. So I'm not going to touch it. I am not going to take my chances with it being connected to live power. Mm-mm. So yeah, gonna be a project for another day. It shouldn't be too hard. It looks like the power supply just comes out with like four screws and then it should just come out of the unit. I also need to take it out because it looks like this like exhaust thing is like clogged with dirt. So that definitely needs to be addressed. But the thing works fine. So that makes me really happy that I was able to save this thing from being scrapped. That is the most important part, in my opinion. And so, oh gosh, it's pulling out the standoffs as well. I'm going to have to tighten those down with the video card, but I can take care of that later. In any case, um, I guess I'll pop that Dell up here, that Precision 370 or whatever it was called. I got it over here. What was the model number on it again? A 370. Okay, yeah, so this is... That's the thing I want to go ahead and pull up. One thing that's interesting is the top case on the Precisions were always a darker shade of gray, or in this case, like a like a off black, compared to the Octoplex counterparts, which had a brighter gray. I don't have my GX280 for reference, but I definitely know that's different. But I might also have to pull that video card out because, gosh, I don't know where my DMS-59 adapter is, and I just want to see if this thing turns on, so... Let me go see if I got a different PCI Express video card that I can shove in this thing for the time being, just for testing, because I really do not remember where my DMS-59 is, and I don't feel like trying to find that today because it's going to be a pain in the butt, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, I think I found something here. This, I think, is a GeForce 9500 GT with 1 gig of VRAM, so this should be more than good enough for a test card. Okay, and here we go. Let's hope this doesn't blow up on me. I heard it do a self-test. It's green. She's lit up. Do we have a video? Oh, God, we have a video. <laughs> Figures it works. <laughs> 
CMOS battery is dead too. That does not surprise me in the slightest. Run BIOS AO4. So let's get into the setup utility here. Pentium 4 at 3 gigahertz. Oh, it's not a 64 bit. Oh, that's. Oh, there we go. That's lame. Why doesn't it have a 64 bit Pentium 4 in it? That's unfortunate. Ah, okay. Well, I guess if I want this thing to be better than the GX28, I gotta swap processors. That sucks. All right, there's our 1 gig of RAM, DDR2533. Does it at least support AHCI? It does support AHCI. That's useful. And yeah, it looks like just your standard Dell BIOS. Uh, cool. Uh, but yeah, that's unfortunate. This only supports 32-bit uh, operating systems. Not surprising from the time period because 64-bit wasn't common yet. But if I were to ever do some kind of experimentation with this computer, I'm inherently limited. But I mean, for Windows XP, that's fine. I was going to run XP on it probably anyway. So that should be totally fine. It's just, I, uh, man, I was wanting to actually do some 64-bit stuff with this, so I guess I'll have to find a different processor. That's okay. Um, I will figure that out, and maybe in the future, you'll see this thing with a, I think it's a Pentium 4 541 from the GX280. It was a 2.8 gigahertz, but it had 64-bit. So I don't know. Um, I'll have to figure that out. But cool, it works. So that's all that cares. Or that's all I care about, really. Um, <laughs> I just like the look of this thing, you know? It's no major, uh, minor difference compared to, like, an Optiplex. It's just really naming, but whatever. I like it. It's kind of neato. So, all right. Let's get this video wrapped up. It's long enough. All right, so there's an RGB thing underneath there. And this, in fact, is a recent thing that I just put together last night as of the making of this video. So this is pretty much going to be the new test bench system. Uh, put together using modern stuff. So this thing is definitely current, including the operating system. So this is a AM5 PC built with a B650 motherboard with 16 gigs of DDR5 and a Ryzen 5 7600X. If you don't believe me, well, not the Microsoft chat thing. I actually legit don't care about that. Get out of my face. Let's try that again. There we go. So you can see Ryzen 5 7600X. 16 gigs of RAM. Very nice. So it's not the most ideal thing in the world, but it's certainly going to do for now. And it'll definitely benchmark my stuff. But I think in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 32 gigs of DDR5 since 16 gigs will be enough for now. But I definitely know for a fact I'm going to need more in the future. And I'm going to get some different storage drives for this thing. I got to get a at least a PCI Express Gen 4 SSD because it's running on a Gen 3 SSD right now. So I need to get some more of those. But that is all that can wait because it works just fine right now. It'll do what I need it to do. So there we go. Uh, this will be the system that I'm using for the upcoming uh, ARC A750 video since uh, I want to not have an inherent CPU bottleneck. Not that the other system of mine which I'm not going to show because my room's kind of a mess still. <laughs> but it was uh, upgraded recently from Ryzen 5 3600 to a Ryzen 5 5600. And while that would actually be pretty good, uh, excuse me, I was just thinking because um, it would alleviate the CPU bottleneck. I was thinking, you know, I want to have something that's going to last me at least a little while. And I think this will fit the bill. So I think a 7600X will be more than plenty enough. So yeah, stay tuned. That video should hopefully be coming out eventually. I... I've just been busy with trying to get stuff done because, yeah, I've been trying to get stuff out of the garage. I've been trying to benchmark stuff in here, and I've been trying to build stuff. As you can see, I got this new thing built, and so and there's been some other video things that I've been wanting to do that I've had to put off because I just don't have the motivation because, well, quite frankly, I work a full-time job, and when you work a full-time job and whatnot, you just don't have enough energy at the end of the day to want to do anything, and so that's pretty much been how it's been for me for the last three weeks or so because I just haven't felt the motivation to really want to pick up the camera and record anything so it is what it is um, i'll probably figure something out and uh, obviously we'll do the arc video but as winter time comes around i'm going to see about getting some more videos made uh, as far as voice chat on discord goes i might be taking less time on that because i want to focus on making some videos so i guess stay tuned for realsies this time i might actually get myself motivated to actually like do something so that'd be kind of nice but in any case, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to show. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this video started to be edited so I can knock it out eventually. And then it'll get it up on the tubes probably by the time that I 
would go to work tomorrow. We'll see about that. See how motivated I am. But yeah, if you like what you saw, as always, you know what to press. If you didn't like it so much, well then, you also know what to press. Get subscribed down below, because I definitely upload rather infrequently. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. So, thank you all for coming to watch, and hopefully I'll see you all in the not-too-distant future. Thank you.